All right, welcome to yet another episode of Spatry's Cup of Linux, and today we are going to be discussing Slackware. Now, um, I have a video coming up where I will be doing a review of Porteus, which happens to be a uh, Linux distribution based on Slackware. And before uh, Pincast and I begin our little discussion here, I'd like to read to you what the Wikipedia has to say about Slackware. Slackware is a free and open source Linux-based operating system. It was one of the earliest operating systems to be built on top of the Linux kernel and is the oldest currently being maintained. Slackware was created by Patrick Volkerding of Slackware Linux Incorporated in 1993. The current stable version is 13.37, released on April 27, 2011. Slackware aims for design stability and simplicity and to be the most unix like linux distribution making as few modifications as possible to software packages from upstream and using plain text files and a small set of shell scripts for configuration and administration now uh i have now uh we have linux soup here and he's actually going to be doing some shows on Slackware, and this may be of interest to a number of my viewers who are looking for uh, solutions on Slackware. Please tell us a little bit about that, Pinkass. Okay. Um, well, uh, what specifically would you like to know? Well, specifically, just tell me about your show, what your primary focus is going to be, uh, what kind of things are you going to be looking at doing shows on in terms of uh, Slackware, are you trying to bring Slackware to the beginner or are you just trying to do advanced things uh, to uh, help out people on Slackware? Pretty much, what is your drive there? My drive, period, is to help people. I want to put out content that can educate the communi community. Um, the primary focus of my channel when I created it was Pin Guy because that's the dish where I feel is the best for beginners. Now, some may disagree with me, but that's just my take on things. But I thought it might be good to branch out a little here and there. Uh, I see tons and tons of Arch videos, but where's Slackware? And I, I tried it recently, and it's really, really just, I enjoyed it. It's pretty good OS, so I thought it'd be fun to do a video on it. Now, when I, uh, when I did my first uh, episode in the series, it got a some pretty good, uh, I guess, reception. Uh, people really seem to enjoy it. got a ton of views. It got the most that I have ever gotten a single video in the shortest amount of time. In six hours, I had like 70 views. So I thought, okay, this might be something people want to see. And I have more content to come. I've done the install. I set up a few things. Uh, I just uploaded a video on Slack builds, which you can use to, uh, to get extra software, sort of like the AUR mm -hmm. and Arch Linux. And my next video will be on taking a source tarball and building a package for the Slackware package manager. And this is something that would definitely be of interest to people who, uh, who really don't have a whole lot of experience with compiling their own programs and that sort of thing. Now, you've had the opportunity to try a number of uh, Linux distributions that are out there, and I'm in full agreement with you that Pinguy OS is definitely a wonderful distribution for beginners. I have it running on four of the house computers that I have here and decided to run Arch on my main system. And... <coughs> Excuse me. Now that I have Arch running, I, I don't think I really want to try anything else out there, to be honest with you. But how would you say that Slackware is different from some of the other Linux distributions that you have tried? And what, what do you feel separates it from the other distros that are out there? Well, uh, one thing that is notable is you do not have auto-dependency resolution. That is, if your program is dependent upon other programs, you have to go out and get those other programs. Now, you can find out very easily uh, what programs you need, but you're basically in the driver's seat for the whole thing. You control what goes on. Uh, this might sound bad, but it really isn't horrific, and I can give you uh, one personal experience I've had with Ubuntu and Wine where it didn't wanna, it couldn't satisfy one dependency, so mm -hmm. I couldn't get Wine installed. Well, if I had manual dependency resolution, I, I could have just installed what I needed and then got wine up and running. 
uh, you can use slackfine.net. You can search for a package. It'll say uh, you need this, that, and the other to uh, run on your system. It'll tell you what you need. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the Slackware forum or the IRC channel. I don't think they have official forums, but uh, there's a, a place for their forums. And the community, though, I, when I've been to the IRC, it's been very, very friendly, very helpful. I mean, it's just, it was just a really awesome channel to be in. The guys are really cool and really knowledgeable and very respectful. Unlike a lot of other Linux distributions, for instance, if you're going on to other IRC channels and that sort of thing, where you're trying to get information for different distributions, and I'm not going to mention any, in spe any distros specifically, but you can oftentimes get the cold shoulder from users that are out there, you know, when uh, they there may be something that is already answered in the documentation, and somebody raises up a question, well, how do I do this and how do I do that? Because maybe they didn't understand what was in the documentation or whatnot. And I can definitely agree with you, even when I was running Pinguy OS, I'd go and try to install something, and it would say a dependency could not be satisfied or this dependency, you know, won't be installed because you have something else, and apparently because you have something else already preloaded on your system that is in conflict. So I can see where this would be a benefit if you are just installing the uh, the dependencies that are required to get these applications running, but that, that may, you know, put up an air of confusion for some users, especially newcomers. So this is this is probably one where the beginners might want to stay away from this one, but intermediate to advanced users who have experience with problem solving and that sort of thing may be able to benefit from this. Oh, well, um, uh, you also, uh, I don't always agree with, uh, if I install a package, whoever packages, you might not always agree with what dependencies it has. That's another thing you might, this, if you're somebody who's in a disagreement a ton with how uh, maintainers put dependencies on the package and you might want to manually resolve dependencies and it's also good for educational purposes too because you know what depends on what or what you actually need bare minimum to get something running so it's good for educational purposes and as for the cold shoulder I mean if you want to tell somebody to read documentations or to google it there's a right way and a wrong way to say it and you, you can be courteous, you can be respectful, you can point them in the direction, or you can be a complete jackass about it and drive them away from <laughs> Linux. Exactly, and that's and that's not our that's definitely not our focus here. You know, we want to, you know, at least at least from our standpoint here, being here on YouTube and that sort of thing, there are a lot of people that are expressing a newfound interest in Linux, especially with the way the software giants are going. And they're looking at these different distributions, and you know you'll have you, you'll have a number of these things. I know when I first started using Linux, for instance, I was searching for the best Linux distribution, what people thought was the best for them, and that sort of thing. And I saw some people said, "Oh, Arch is the best." Some people said Mint was the best, you know. But I wanted something that was going to actually support their claims. Besides, simply Mint is the best, you know. Uh, I actually wanted to, to get people's uh, views and feedback, and this is where uh, the YouTube channels have come in really handy for me because now you can actually see these operating systems in action. You have these show hosts that are actually taking you through these, uh, these steps and everything, and then it, it allows the end user themselves to make a more informed decision, if you will. Now, let me ask you something else about Slackware. Is there a way to make this a rolling release, or is this, or does this have the six-month release cycle that one would come to expect with any other distribution? Well, uh, yes, there is a way to make it rolling release, and before I get into that, uh, for the release cycle, it's ready pretty much when it's ready. Patrick Volkerding aims to make one release per year. Uh, let's see if the last one was in April, I believe. Uh, the, inst uh, the upgrade process. Now, the upgrade process uh, is a bit different. Uh, there should be a README and some of the Slackware mirrors on upgrading. And it, uh, you kind of use the shell and install extra packages to upgrade the system. I've never done it personally, but I've read the README. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, and with that, you could take 
a normal Slackware system and upgrade to Slackware current, which is the roll and release uh, version of Slackware. Or you could just install Slackware current. Now, uh, let me ask you, which would you recommend? Would you recommend to uh, the power user like me? Would you recommend that I were to run a rolling release, or would you would you say you're better off sticking with the current if you're new? Uh, I can't really say. I've never used Slackware current, and I've never actually done an upgrade on Slackware. I've only I've uh, tried it out recently. Uh, I tried it like a year ago. Didn't really like it, but when I tried it again, somebody else in the Linux District community was doing an install and I was interested in giving it another shot and he gave me some pointers and it completely changed my Slackware experience. I'm like, wow, this is a, this is a pretty good operating system. That is another good point to bring up because uh, this is how we initially started uh, communicating was through the Linux Distro community. And that is a valuable resource because even though it's not really big right now, uh, it is starting to grow. I notice that we're starting to see more people show up, and it is a wonderful place where you can interact with other people and get answers to questions about the different operating systems that are out there. Uh, that's this is how we met Setkey, and this guy know, really knows his stuff where um, where Arch Linux is concerned, and he actually helped me out on a number of things. And so it's a great way to interact and. Uh, and, and learn things and that sort of thing. So it sounds to me like uh, Slackware has a really good product on their hands here. It, it is the oldest maintained Linux distribution out there. I'm going to be looking at Porteous right now, um, but in my search I didn't, and, and maybe I didn't do an extensive enough search, but I couldn't find a Slackware live CD. Is Are, are there any live CDs for this, or is this something you really have to install to, to try it out? For Slackware or Slackware-based distro? Just for Slackware itself. Uh, there's no, uh, depends on the definition of live CD. If you boot up, you boot up, it's sort of like Arch ISO where you just boot up and then you, you do your partition and then you start to set up and install. So technically, yeah, it's live me, but it's not like you get your full desk and desktop environment and whatnot. you got to install for that. So anybody that wants to actually try Slackware itself, really, you're, you're going to have to install it or you're going to have to use a uh, live CD that another uh, provider is offering where there is a desktop already pre-configured and that sort of thing with it. Now, let me ask you, when you go to install Slackware for the first time, are you given any choices as to which desktop you want or are you presented with a command line that... Uh, with which you have to go in and physically download these individual desktops or, or uh, window managers, that sort of thing, and uh, configure them yourself. Well, um, uh, well, let me uh, explain first. Okay, uh, in the 90s, you installed Slackware off of floppies. They had diskettes that you could choose from. If you get the full DVD, you get all the diskettes on it. You, KDE has its own diskette, but I think the X get for Zorg has uh, XFC and some other window managers. It'll install those unless you uncheck them from the install, but you don't download anything from the internet. Uh, it is installed off of your media, and it only installs what's checked. You can uncheck entire diskettes. Then when you proceed, uh, you can either install everything off of your selected diskettes, or you can go to Expert, in which you can uncheck anything you don't want. Okay, so this is interesting. So unlike Arch Linux, after you install the core system, basically you'll have a graphical user interface that you can boot into. It'll boot into command prompt, but if you type in start X, it'll, um, <clears throat> boot, it'll start your default graphics environment. Uh, what part of the install, install script is where you choose your default environment. Uh, you won't have anybody but root, so you'll have to add that first thing when you, you have to log in as root, add your user, switch over to user, then start X, because you, you don't want to start X as root. Yeah, definitely not recommended. Okay, well, this is this has been a very invigorating chat on uh, Slackware, so 
Uh, this And this looks like something I may want to try down the road in a virtual machine, actually installing it myself and just to see how the uh, install process and everything goes. And I'm glad that we've had an opportunity to talk about this. And to all of my subscribers, if Slackware is your thing, you definitely want to check out Pinkcast's channel. I will have a link to him in the show notes. Also, you will see that he has already has a link on my recommended section on my channel, so you can definitely uh, step in there and get your bowl of Linux soup. He's going to be covering a lot of topics, and um, he's a welcome addition to the community. I'd like to thank you, Pinkcast, for your contribution to the community. Uh, it's it's always good to have people who are specify, you know, who are who are working in specific niches. This way. You know, people can find the answers that they're looking for. So, we'll, you know, we have one show host that's doing Gen 2, and then we have another one that's doing Slackware, and we have uh, other ones that are just doing Ubuntu-based distributions and that sort of thing. And uh, so it's, it's really good that we're starting to evolve as a community to be able to have these answers available for everybody that's out there. And to all my subscribers, if you thought this was useful, please comment and subscribe. Google+, Plus, Facebook, and Twitter will keep you up to date every time I send another video up to YouTube. I'd like to thank you all for listening to this podcast, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.